Tego, Scano, Ani, hello, it's Aaron, and I'm back. All right, the story I'm going to share with you this session is a true story that happened with my that happened with my son. My son's Jack; he's 12 years old. Right, but before we get into that, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, what First Nations people have kind of sort of gone through over the last hundred years. One of the things that uh, happened was that when the Europeans arrived over here, they wanted all the land. But they, they couldn't really take the land because there's already people there. So in order for them to confiscate the land and take the land, they had to turn the First Nations people into something that was very evil and bad. So they had to dehumanize what the First Nations culture was. They called us savages, they called us barbarians, they called us the Red Man. And one of the reasons why they called us the Red Man is because when the Europeans first arrived over here, our, our bodies were covered entirely in red clay. Right? We had tattoos and everything else. But the reason we had the red clay over our bodies is because the red clay was covered in bear fat. And that kept the mosquitoes away. Because our people were just like everybody else. We didn't like mosquitoes. So we didn't want to have mosquitoes on our bodies. So that's why we had the red clay. And that's where we got the moniker, the red man. All right? But we never, we never actually had any of these things. But that's how the Europeans uh, decided to uh, try and make, make First Nations people not human. And we've been fighting against this for, for hundreds and hundreds of years. And we're still fighting against it today. Although now, today, things are slowly starting to change. They're starting to recognize what First Nations culture is now. Like now we have the 21st of June, which is National Aboriginal Day, the summer solstice. Right? Uh, we have National Aboriginal Month, which is in November. Right? We have uh, lots of cities and streets and are, are named after First Nations culture. Right? So Toronto is an Abri is a Anishinaabe word for the place of gathering. Uh, Ottawa is named after the Odawa people who used to live up in that territory until they were moved away from that territory so they could create their capital city. Canada, of course, is named after the Mohawk word Ganado, meaning village. Mm. Ontario, I believe it means fresh flowing waters in Ojibwe because that's the, the fur trade route from up north all the way down to the place of gathering Toronto. Then there's all kinds of other First Nations names. There's Mississauga. There's Winnipeg, there's Saskatchewan, Alberta, Utah, Ohio, Kentucky, Chicago, Lakota, Dakota, Florida, Seminole, all these names, Omaha, all these names are First Nations names. Right? But a lot of the people don't recognize that, they don't see that, because it's not taught in schools. Right? And that's one thing that First Nations, that we would appreciate, is to have our culture recognized within school, so the little ones have a little bit more creation understanding. Right? So that's, that's one thing. But another thing that we have a problem with are these sports logos. Because right? there's a lot of teams out there that still have uh, First Nations caricatures within their, their, their logos. Now granted, a lot of those teams are starting to slowly take those, those logos away. For example, the Cleveland Indians. They had a logo on there, a First Nations man, red, red skin, big smile, black hair. And he had the, 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 the thing on the back there. And they named him Chief Wahoo. Chief Wahoo, oh hello, I have a, I don't know whether, yeah. I don't know whether you can see him or not, but there's a, there's a cat here. <laughs> don't bite me please, I'm, I'm on camera. Okay, well you can play, that's fine. Um, so, <clears throat> what they do with the Canadian Indians is just last year, a one paragraph thing on their website said that they will no longer be using Chief Wahoo as their mascot or as their logo. No explanation. Just a short little paragraph saying we'll no longer be using it. That's great, but they've been using it for a hundred years, right? And um, Wahoo is a derogatory name towards First Nations people, right? So when you say Wahoo, it's like calling a black person the N-word. It's very disrespectful, it's very uh, ignorant, and that sort of thing. So you can just imagine, if you're, if you're just, a, if you're just a, a First Nations little boy, and your favorite baseball team is the Cleveland Indians, and your dad takes you to the very first baseball game. You got your glove, you got your jersey. You go into the fans and the stadium and you see your team play. You see the mascot. And you're sitting there going, wow, that looks a lot like a First Nations man. Because that's what it was. He was a First Nations guy. And he would bounce around and do stuff like that. And he would go like this and all, all these bad like things, right? <clears throat> so after the game is done, the First Nations father and the boy, they're walking down into the, into the parking lot. But then all these other kids are out there. And they see them walking down the street with their long hair and their brown skin. And they all go, oh look, 
That's Chief Wahoo and his son. And they're all going, whoa, 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 whoa. how do you think that makes that little First Nations child feel? It makes it feel that he's not really human. Right? And that's the one thing that, that we, we don't want for our children. I don't think anybody wants that for any of their children. Right? So the Cleveland Indians were one. That's one major league sports ball, or baseball team that has that logo. And then there's another one. The other one is the Atlanta Braves. Right? So the Brave, Braves, is another word for the Old West First Nations culture. Because then they would call the First Nations warriors brave. So there goes the Braves. They're, they're all named Braves. Now, our warriors were brave because the warriors were the first ones into battle and the last ones out because they had to protect the elders and the youth, the sick and the wounded and the children to get away first. That's why they were brave. They were just doing their jobs protecting their families. But in the Atlanta Braves logos, they have two tomahawks crossed side by side. And then on their, their one jersey, they have the Atlanta. Then they have the other tomahawk or the pipe or whatever. I don't remember what's on that. Right? And then they did something that was... I think the cat can smell my cat. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> anyway. So the Atlanta Braves, they had a thing called the tomahawk chop. Now, I'm pretty old, so I remember when the uh, Toronto Blue Jays played the Atlanta Braves for the World Series in 1992. And in their stadiums, when the Blue Jays went down there to play in Atlanta, 50,000 people are going, oh, 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 oh. And that's a, a symbol of, of, of war. That's a tomahawk coming down again and again and again to, to, to hurt someone. And then this song, oh, 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 we never did that. That was never any of our songs, right? And there would be people out in the stadiums with their, their fake headdresses bashing on, on drums and so on and so forth, right? So to our people, that was, that was very derogatory. It, it, didn't, it's, it wasn't really fair to who we are, right? And then we have the Kansas City Chiefs. It's a football team. They won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. They have the headdress on their logo, right? But it's, they call it the war bonnet, right? The war bonnet for the Plains Nations. Each one of those eagle feathers for our people, each one of those eagle feathers in the bonnet was a symbol of something that that person had done for their people. <coughs> so whether they adopted an orphan child or whether they provided food for a family they didn't have any or they defended their people or they learned languages or they shared stories, they would get an eagle feather as a reward for that. So it was a badge of honor. And that was what would go on to the war bonnet. The, the, the headdress, actually, not the war bonnet. And the longer the bonnet was, the more respected that person was. But to the Kansas City Chiefs, that headdress represented war. So the Kansas City Chiefs put that logo on their jerseys, saying to other teams that, hey, we're the Kansas City Chiefs. You come to our people, we're going to defeat you, just like they defeated and defended their home territory. But that's not what the symbol meant. The symbol was actually a symbol of respect for the people. Right. Another, one, another one is the Chicago Blackhawks. That's a hockey team, obviously. They've won a few Stanley Cups over the past couple of years. But their logo is a First Nations man with war paint on the face that also has the boron on there as well, and he looks very grim and fierce. And again, it's a symbol of war, a symbol of, uh, of who... It's, uh, it's just, uh, 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 we're going to beat you up and stuff like that. But that's, that's not what... It was at all. In fact, nobody in Chicago probably knows what Chicago means in Cree. Chicago in Cree means place of skunk. Because when the Europeans arrived over here, they had no place to farm or settle. So they asked the Cree people, where can we, where can we farm? Where can we set up? So when you move to a new land or you're just starting out, the first thing you want to find is you need to find clean water. And then you need to find fertile land. Then you need to find land where there's plenty of sustenance and provisions, hunting territories. So the Cree went, sure, go to Chicago, Chicago, place of skunk. Place of skunk represented skunk cabbage. Skunk cabbage is a plant that's about this wide. It's about a foot off the ground, but it has big leafy leaves. And if you break those leaves off, it emits a smell like skunk. But everywhere where those plants grew, the land was fertile, it was black with nutrients. There was always clean water around, and there were always plenty of forests around, which means plenty of deer and sustenance. 
So the, the settlers, when they first went there, they named their, their, their settlement Chicago in honor of the Cree people. But nobody in Chicago probably knows what that means now. And that's what we're discussing. Because the, the ironic thing is that Chicago has another nickname. Right? Chicago has a nickname called Chicago, the Windy City. So place of skunk, the Windy City. So we kind of get a giggle out of that. <laughs> Actually, our people have a, a good sense of humor. One of the teachings from our elders from way back in the day is, your enemies can never defeat you if you can still laugh and smile. So that's one of the reasons why we get along with the Irish. Because the Irish had the same problems as our people did. They were underneath the boot heel of the English for many years. Right? We were underneath uh, the boot heel of, of European nations for many years. But the Irish, they had a war dance. They had ceremonies and dances and songs. They had chiefs. We had chiefs. Um, and we also had a dark sense of humor. <laughs> so that's why we get along with the Irish uh, and the Scottish very well, because um, we, uh, we have that same ironic and black sense of humor. But that's one of the things that we always want to do, is we want to have, have respect for First Nations culture. Because there's a lot of things that the First Nations people have, have shared with the world to this day. Actually, 60 to 70% of the foods that we eat all over the world originated right here in North and South America, or Turtle Island, right? When the European nations first arrived over here, uh, Samuel de Champlain was investigating the, the Iroquois uh, villages. He called them villages because they were made out of wood. But in any other culture, he would call them cities. Because the, the cities were huge. He said that he wrote back to the King of France and said that it took him three days to walk through nothing but corn, beans, and squash to get to the village in the center. Can you imagine walking for three days and seeing nothing but corn, beans, and squash? That is how much our, our people cultivated the land. And that city that was in there had close to 40 to 50,000 people within it. Right? They didn't even have cities like that over in, over in Europe at that time. Most of the cities were, were just villages. For First Nations culture, we're, we're not <coughs> cartoons, we're not caricatures. Um, our culture is still alive and thriving to this day. We have ceremonies. Uh, uh, our, our children, even if they're on non-native schools, they're allowed to take time out of school to go and be a part of their ceremonies now. Uh, Canadian government has recognized residential, residential schools, obviously. Um, they've also recognized 60, 60 scoop survivors. Uh, the, the First Nations culture is now being taught in schools, both in primary as well as secondary, which never happened when I was in, in school. And... Um, <clears throat> The Toronto, uh, the Toronto Catholic District School Board is one of the strongest boards in Ontario that actually acknowledged the First Nations culture. So now, like 20 years ago, I wouldn't have been allowed to go into one of those schools. But over the past five years, I've been working with them, and it's been amazing. Uh, the city of Burlington has done the exact same thing. Toronto, everywhere, uh, has, has acknowledged what First Nations culture is. But there's still some work to do, right? And that's one of the reasons why we're doing programs like this. So there's more education out there. Because the more we learn about one another, the more respect we have for each other and for our children. All right, so this story uh, is a personal one for, for me because this story is about my son and I, right? So my son, his name is Jack. But when he was two, he wore those big bulky diapers and he would waddle everywhere. So he would just waddle, 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 waddle. So I'd be sitting on my couch, holding my traditional remote, watching my traditional TV shows, and I'd see my son, waddle, 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 waddle <laughs> fall down, right? But then, one day, my son learned how to run, as all children are like to do. So no longer was he waddle, waddle, waddle. Now he was running everywhere he went. So I'd be sitting on my couch, traditional remote, watching my traditional TV shows, and I would hear, dum, 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 dum. and I would say, ah! And I'll teach you to leave your toys all over the living room floor because that is just the type of father I am. But one day, his mother chose a different path from ours. One day, mother was there. The next, she was gone. And my son was only two and a half years old. He did not know how to ask those questions like, where did mother go? Why did mother leave? When is mother coming home? And I couldn't help my son because I did not speak to an a half-year-old. 
<clears throat> so a lot of times when our children cannot express themselves, they show it in many different ways. They either become very, very loud and have temper tantrums, or they become very, very quiet and go off and sit in the corner. Or they have bad dreams. This is what my son had. My son had bad dreams. He would wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and yell out, Daddy, I had a bad dream! And I said the same thing to him that all of her parents have said to you. I said, it's okay. Your dream is over now. And I love you very much. You can come lay with me. Now my son, very, very little. Big, bulky diapers. I had a very tall bed. All I could see at the edge of the bed was this. <coughs> Two little eyes. One little leg. <coughs> to grab him by the diapers and pull him up onto the bed. <coughs> and lay him in the bed. Now my son does not sleep normal like you and I. My son sleeps, he immediately dreams that he's a ninja. <coughs> right across the face. And he kicks <coughs> right in the side. Now... I do not want to wake up my son because our elders teach us that when our, when our children sleep, that is when the Creator comes down and reminds them of all the things they've learned throughout that day. This is why it's very important for our children to get lots and lots of sleep, so the Creator can remind them and reboot them for the next day. Right? But <clears throat> I also have a cat. My cat has a very traditional First Nations name. My cat's name, Coco Bean. Coco being the cat, lays at the end of the bed, usually on my feet, usually like this. So I'm laying in the top right hand corner of my bed shivering because not only does my son dream that he's a ninja, he also dreams that he's a thief and whoom, takes those blankets away. So as I was saying, I do not want to wake up my son. But I'm a single father, still am a single father. I raised my son on my own. I fought for my son. I went to court for my son. But I also need to support my son. I need my sleep. So I gotta find some way to let my son know that I love and care for him. That I believe in his strength and courage enough that he can spend the entire night in his own bed. Our elders always teach us there are many different ways to communicate. First of all, an elder is someone with gray hair. Our elders, our, our teachings about our elders is every single one of those gray hairs in our elder's head is one thing that they can share with our children. So the more gray hair, the more knowledge they can share. So the more respect they deserve. I have a few little gray hairs coming in, so I'm, I'm almost there. <clears throat> so, our elders always say there are many different ways to communicate. Communicate with your eyes, communicate with your voice, communicate with your body language. You can also communicate through music. <clears throat> our elders also share with us that if you want to live your life in a good way, you must always try and learn something new each and every day. Now, a lot of times you see adults out there with grumpy faces always looking down. It might be because they got stuck in that rut of get up, go to work, come home, go to sleep, get up, go to work, come home, go to sleep. They forgot to learn something new each and every day. So one of the things I always wanted to learn how to do was how to play the flute. And then I realized that if I learned how to play the flute, I might be able to create a song for my son when he has a bad dream. And therefore, all I'm going to have to do is think of this song and know that he was loved and cared for. So, I got myself a flute. And I practiced, and I practiced, and I practiced. Now this is a beginner's flute. It's very small. It only has six holes, right? Now I'm still learning. I'm, a, I'm like in grade two of flute play, right? Some of my friends, they're, 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 they're in like post-secondary university of flute play, right? So I'm, I'm still learning, right? But I got the flute, and I practiced, and I practiced, and I practiced. Practiced, and I practiced, and I practiced. And then when I thought I was ready, my son came into my room one day, 2.30 in the morning, and he goes, Daddy, I have my dream! All I could see at the edge of the bed, two little eyes, one little leg, to reach over, grab him by his diapers, and pull him into the bed. But that was the last night. The next night he comes into my room and he says, Daddy, I had a bad dream. And I said, Son, the next time you have a bad dream, do not come into my room and say, Daddy, 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 I had a bad dream. Say, Daddy, 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 go get your flute. So the next night, comes into my room. He goes, 
Daddy, I have... Uh, Daddy, go get your flute. So, I picked up my flute. I took my son by his hand. I walked him back to his room. I laid him in his bed. I fluffed up his pillow. I tucked him in. I kissed him on the forehead. I checked the claws of her monsters. I looked underneath the bed for monsters. I sat beside him on the bed and I said, Son, your dream is over now. And I love you very much. And I'm just across the hall. But the next time you do have a bad dream, all you have to do is think of this song. Because I believe in your strength and courage enough that you can spend the entire night in your own bed. But if you do have a bad dream, all you have to do is think of this song and know that Daddy is always just across the hall. And this is my son's bad dream song. My son would go to sleep. My son, no longer two years old, <clears throat> no longer weighs, or no longer wears those big bulky diapers. Now my son's 12 years old, and he still has his toys all over my living room floor. And he still runs around the house. And he's still playing Fortnite. But every once in a while, 2.30 in the morning, I can hear this from just across the hall. So even though my son was only two years old, he still remembers that song. And he still remembers how that made him feel. So every once in a while, my son will ask me, Daddy, what does it mean to be First Nations? What does it mean to be Ojibwe? And I'll say, do you remember the creation story? Yes. Do you remember the story of Gift of Patience? Yes. Do you remember your bad dream song? And I'll go, yes. And I'll say, that is what it means to be Ojibwe. That is what it means to be First Nations. Mm -hmm. And as I said, things are changing now. Things are not as bad as they were 50 years ago, or even 20 years ago. I take my son to the park, just like I was a little boy. <coughs> And the kids will be asking, are, are, are you Italian? Are you Portuguese? My son goes, no, I'm Ojibwe. And I'm sitting on the park bench going, oh, I'm going to have to get up and teach these kids a lesson. Teach them how to have respect. But no, all these kids went, oh, you're First Nations? That's so cool. And all they would do is they would go off and play. That's because that's all, that's all children are supposed to do is play and ask questions. Right? Those are the things that are taught. Right? But that's... That's the end of this session. We're going to let the cat back out because he was making some noises. Right? <laughs> we'll see you for the last session.